Hey everyone, it's Isaac and in this video we're talking about candle moulds. We have silicon, copper and aluminium, we're going to cover them all, so let's get going. At the end of my candle recipe video I left you guys with a little guessing exercise to see if you could figure out which mould baked which candle. So here it is again and I'll give you a few seconds to take a guess if you haven't already. And here are the answers. Did you get it right? Let me know in the comments. So, you probably want to know which mould is the best. Well, that depends on what you mean by the best. The easy answer here is the copper moulds. If you already looked at any cannelé recipe online, people always say copper moulds make the best cannelés. And to be honest, they would be right. But copper moulds are not only very expensive, but can actually make your cannelé worse if you don't know how to use them properly. More on that later. For now, let's have a look at these cannelés and see how exactly the cannelés made from the copper moulds are better. You may be surprised at how similar some of these are for a fraction of the price. Let's start off with the crust. The hallmark of a good cannelé is the evenly caramelised outside, which gives a good crunch when you bite into it to expose the gooey custody centre. The copper mould is exceptional in doing this because it conducts heat so so well. As you can see, it's wonderfully thin and even. On the other end of the spectrum we have the cheap silicon mould. The thing about silicon is that it's actually a very poor conductor of heat. So to get the same level of caramelisation we need to bake it for much longer. But even then we never really get an even coating. In fact, some parts of the cannelé will start burning when other parts are still undercooked. What you end up with is a very thick and bitter shell, which isn't really what you want in a cannelé at all. So, what about the expensive silicon and aluminium moulds? To be honest, they get very close to the copper moulds. It's not perfect, and you can see some areas are lighter than others, especially around the top and the sides. But they're not burnt, and it's thin enough to give a good crunch. Again, this is down to how well the moulds conduct heat. Aluminium conducts heat at about 60% of copper, so it's no surprise that the cannelé turned out decent. But how does the expensive silicon mould keep up? Well the secret is that these moulds are actually not entirely silicon. They have metal powder mixed into the silicon itself to boost conductivity, and as you can see, it really works. The one I use are made by a French company called The Buyer, and you can always trust the French when it comes to baking. So, what about the filling then? Does the mould make a difference? To be honest, very little. The copper and aluminium moulds make a more consistent and denser cannelé, whereas the silicon ones produce larger, uneven air pockets. I don't really have a real explanation for this, but if I were to guess, I think it's because the bubbles travel through the batter a little bit faster with the metal moulds. But in my opinion, unless you're a real perfectionist or a cannelé connoisseur, this affects the cannelé experience very little. So, which mould is the best then, and which one should you buy? Let's start off by saying definitely not the cheap silicon mould. I hope that much is obvious from the video. But at this point, you may expect me to say copper moulds. But the truth is, I actually use the aluminium and the expensive silicon mould much more than I use the copper ones. These are much cheaper, so I have a lot more of them, and I can bake much larger batches. These moulds are typically half the price or less of the copper ones, with very comparable results as you just saw. They don't need to be seasoned either, and it's much easier to clean, which is another huge plus for a home baker like me. Copper moulds need to be coated in oil and baked regularly so the cannelaise doesn't stick. This is called seasoning, and can be a lot of effort if you're baking regularly. So, a little fun fact is that even my local cannelaise seller uses the same expensive silicon moulds we used in this video. It's a French company based in London called Babel, and their candelays are absolutely amazing. So if it's good enough for them, I think it's good enough for us. Having said all of that, if you're after the candelay with that even crust and perfectly consistent gooey inside, then it is copper moulds without a doubt. But it will cost you time and effort. They generate upwards of five pounds each, that's about six US dollars. So if you wanna be able to bake batches of six, that will be £30 or $36 minimum. You can get a lot of other kitchenware for that money. In summary then, for everyday baking, for some perfectly good cannelés, I would recommend using the expensive silicon and the aluminium moulds, just because they're much more affordable and it will save you a lot of time. 
However, if you are a bit of a perfectionist and want to get that perfect candle, then you will need to invest money and time in a set of copper molds and how to use them. So that's my opinion. What do you think? Which molds are you going to go for? I do want to do a part three of this video series at some point on how to take candelays to the next level with different flavors and decorations. Is this something you guys will be interested in? Let me know down in the comments and I'll see you guys in the next one.